Hi everyone, Meg here from ITU Stamping and today I'm so excited I get to introduce to you a new product line out from Stampin' Up. These are called Stampin' Blends. So what are they? Simply put, they're just an alcohol-based marker. That's what you need to know. Whereas the Stampin' Write markers from Stampin' Up are a dye-based, these are alcohol-based. So let me just take a minute and show you around the marker and tell you about the specialty products that you'll need to go along with it. So we have our markers. These are the Stampin' Blends. I love them that they're rectangular. They're not gonna roll off my tabletop, which is always a bonus. They're gonna be double-ended. We're gonna have a blunt end to them, as well as a brush end to them. And you saw that I was struggling a bit with the caps, and that is essential, my friends. These are an airtight cap. They have a true seal, and so sometimes they're a little bit hard to take on or take off and put on, but that is a perk. You definitely want that anytime you're looking at an alcohol-based marker. They come in a variety of colors and they can be bought individually as well as many of the colors can be bought in a set. In the set, you'll have a light shade as well as a dark shade. So let's take a moment and just kind of talk about the specialty things that you need to go along with them. There's only three. You're going to want Whisper White cardstock. The cardstock you already know and love from Stampin' Up comes in two different thicknesses, the regular and the thicker cardstock, and that's all you need as far as cardstock goes. So no, nothing specialty that you would use just for these markers. It's the regular cardstock you already love. And then you'll need your Memento Tuxedo Black Ink Pad. This is my go-to black pad anyway. Just know that you're not gonna want to use the basic black archival or regular from Stampin' Up. And then the third one, and we're going to spend a ton of time with this one in an upcoming video, but the third must have is the color lifter. This is essential. Like don't even buy a single marker if you're not gonna get the lifter. Like I said, this, this right here is enough that I can do an entire another video and teach you all the fun things you can do with it. And that video is coming up. All right, so now that we've talked about the specialty things you need, and we've talked about what the markers are like, Let's use them. As I said before, there's gonna be a light shade and a dark shade. And the whole point of these is that you can blend the colors together, just like the name implies. So we don't have a light section, but it right up next to a dark section. We can have a gradient look on our card making. So that's the whole point of having these blends markers. But it doesn't mean you can't use them individually. So if you wanted to have a patch of flowers and you wanted some of them to be the lighter color and some to be the darker, there you go. So I'm gonna be using the Bermuda Bay ones. And so I'm gonna start with the brush end. This is the end that I use the most. And let me just show you how they work. We just color, and as you notice, I'm not even using a stamp for this one. And you don't have to. You can color in, it's a great way to make your own backgrounds, color in water, make a wash, whatever you want. But this is already dry to the touch. It dries quickly because they're alcohol based. However, we can go back over them and I'll show you that here in a second. I'm getting ahead of myself. Then I'm gonna go over the, or right next to it with the darker color. And as these dry, you'll notice that there's no lines in the middle of them. Versus if we were using a dye marker, we're gonna have marker lines, the things you're used to that you've grown up with, what you know, you're used to seeing those lines in between, you try to get rid of the lines and then it just saturates your cardstock or your paper and then you're not happy. We just don't even have those lines to mess with here. All right, so we can use them individually and that's what they would look like, but they're blends, let's blend. So my favorite way to do it is to start with my lightest color and layer on my darker. So I'm gonna start with my lighter, and right next to it, I'm gonna to go to my darker. And then I'm going to merge these two together. I'm gonna to do it by bringing my light to my dark and going back over it. And there we have it. As it dries, you'll notice it's lighter on the left and uh, darker on the right. And that's it. That's it. As I tell people, the, the good news is these are incredibly easy to learn how to use. The great news is, is it's incredibly easy to master these. Love these markers. They are simplicity at its finest. This is how we go from light to dark in a matter of seconds. 
Okay, so that's how we do it without stamps. Let's go ahead and talk about the stamps we will want to use in picking those out so that you have the best outcome every time. Let's talk first about what doesn't work well because I think there's, or I know, there's so much more that does work well than doesn't. What doesn't work well when you're picking out your stamps for using blends is having images that aren't complete. And so what I mean by that is, we have our cute little reindeer on this stamp set. This is one of my favorite stamp sets. We have our cute reindeer and the image is complete. But on our Eskimo with his hat, it was designed to look fuzzy, so there's no outline. And that's what we're looking for, is an outline-based stamp, our line art stamps. Now, we also don't want solid color ones like our cute little gingerbread because we're gonna be stamping that. There's no reason to blend color. It's just already done for us with an ink pad. So on this particular stamp set, I would have a lot of fun coloring the reindeer and the Santa, and I'd leave the other ones alone. Let's jump over to another one that I love. This is flowers. I think one of the things we tend to think of first when we're working with blends is flowers. And so I love this one here. It's a line art as well as this one, but the rest of these really would not be good for using your blends. One of my favorite stamp sets in the current holiday catalog from Stampin' Up! is called Hug in a Mug, and I call this stamp set Technicotopia because there's just so much you can do with this stamp set. That's a video for another day. But we have these solid color images and we have little pieces that'll fit into it. We wouldn't want to color just this whipped cream because there's no bottom to it, but if we stamp this up next to or on top of our coffee cup, we get to share that line, and so we can create our own line art that way. And then finally, we have ones that already have some hints of shading built into it for us. And that would be ones like the Holly Berry Happiness. We have our poinsettia leaves, and we also have our bows, and they have the areas that indicate what should be darker. We can use that to our advantage, so don't feel like you have to stay away from these. In fact, I invite you to try them. So that's what I'm looking for when I'm picking out my stamps. So now let's mix blends with stamping. I'm gonna go back to the stamps that I told you I was really excited about, and that's Hug in a Mug. And I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna use the Memento Tuxedo Black Ink Pad. Now know that you can also heat emboss your outline image and color in with that. But when you're first learning, I really recommend that you practice with the Memento Ink Pad. So I'm gonna stamp my cute little coffee cup and we're gonna leave it at that for right now. We do wanna make sure that our ink is dry before we color it in. And that's just a quick finger test and none came up on my fingers, so away we go. I'm gonna work with some blues this time. I'm gonna go ahead, actually I lied. Let's go ahead and work with some purple. Let's do some rich razzleberry. I love this color. Now to me as I'm looking at this, and we'll get into light sources in other videos, don't worry. But as I'm looking at it, as I think about a coffee mug and the way it's angled, it seems to be brighter in the middle and darker at the top and definitely at the bottom. So that's the look I'm gonna go for. As I said before, I like to start by layering my colors with my lightest first. So I'm gonna go through and color in the entire mug. And just go for one consistent color. All right, and now I'm ready to bring in my darker. I'm gonna just mainly focus on the bottom of this mug for this video. It's about as far as up, up as I want my darker. Then I'm gonna go back with my light and go over it. I can also help pull that color up as well as just go around in a circle. And my friends, that's all there is. There's no magic that I did on here. I didn't sprinkle any pixie dust on it. That's all it takes. And so there we have it. A brief overview on what the markers are, the three things you need to go with them, the Whisper White cardstock, your color lifter, and your Memento Tuxedo Black ink pad. We also talked about picking out stamps that'll work best with your blends, and then we covered just the very basics of it. So if you have any questions about it, please search on my YouTube channel for more videos on Stampin' Blends. You can also leave your questions in the comments below. 
Thank you so much for joining me for this video. I'm anxious to share this product line with you. Again, I'm Meg from iTeach Stamping and I'll see you in the next video.